After months of digging, what our 10 Investigates team found is now launching an investigation within the Ohio Bureau of Motor Vehicles. Back in July, Chief Investigative Reporter Bennett Haberly found the BMV is selling drivers' personal information to third parties. That sale is happening without your permission. But what happens after that sale led 10 Investigates on a months long journey that uncovered a possible violation of a law meant to protect your information. Here's Chief Investigative Reporter Bitter Haberly. This is a 2021 Buick Encore, which I bought for $10 back in September. The seller, my employer, WBNS 10 TV, which sold me the car for the purposes of this story, which was to test what would happen after I bought the car, after I transferred the title into my name at the Ohio Bureau of Motor Vehicles. The owner of a new Buick. About five weeks later, what I thought might happen did. I got this mailer warning of a final notice on my Buick that I needed to call and sign up for an extended service contract. Call us immediately? Thank you for calling. So I called. And it says it's you guys uh, that it's um, you're contacting me because of the vehicle's mileage or age. You know, it's uh, it's a 2021 vehicle, so I'm not sure how the service contract would have expired on it. And I'm more curious about how you got my contact information. The man on the phone told me he worked for an extended auto warranty company, which we're not naming. He added they bought my personal information from another entity, but wouldn't say more. Then it, uh, a little more information. Two days ago, I got another one. We found other Ohio drivers with similar experiences. John Kaminsky, who got similar mailers weeks after buying a car and titling it with the Ohio BMV, said his dealer assured him they didn't sell his personal information. I expect the state to, to have some discretion and, and have my best interests at heart. Well, I just know that when I go to the BMV, next thing I know, there I, I get them. You know? Barb Woodruff didn't go to a dealership. This car has been in her family for years. The title was transferred to her last year in a divorce. Weeks later, she says those extended auto warranty mailers arrived. I got it right after the BMV and registering a car which is annoying because I didn't give you the authority to sell my stuff. 10 investigates obtained records showing the Ohio BMV makes tens of millions of dollars each year selling drivers' personal data to third parties. Since 2010, the state has made more than $250 million, money that goes to help operate the Bureau. A federal law called the Driver's Privacy Protection Act was designed to protect drivers' information, but it has 14 exemptions that allow entities to send you things like court notices, insurance info, and auto safety recalls. The one thing they can't do, send you direct marketing materials or solicitations. If I get these in the mail after I've contacted the BMV, is that a violation of the law? If you can track it back to the DMV, yes. Issue is, can you track it back? That is the challenge, according to Texas attorney Joe Malley, who specializes in privacy matters. According to Malley, it's possible that the entity which bought the driver data from the state, we'll call them Company X, is not the same company as Company Y, which may have sent you those mailers, creating a fog, blurring, who may have violated a law designed to protect drivers' personal information. If these companies are sending you these mailers and they're happening about five weeks or as few as two weeks after people go to contact with the BNB, do you believe the source of these mailers starts with the BMV data? Yes, I believe the source does start with the DMV data. As to who all's involved is a different story and who knows what is a different story. In our test of the system, there was no dealership, no financing. My insurance company told me in writing they didn't sell my information for marketing purposes. Two months after I bought the car, I sold it back to the station, and weeks later, 10 TV started getting mailers. The question, was the BMV sale of driver data triggering this? We turned over our results to the BMV and spoke to registrar Charlie Norman. The only entity who we went through to title this car was the BMV. So we weren't triggered by getting an oil change or filling up at a gas station or talking to our insurance. This is triggered by contact with the BMV. So I guess that's why I'm trying to pin down how that, do you think it could be anything else? That same insurance company that gets the uh, data from our bulk data files tells us in writing they're not using it for that purpose. So, you know, it's hard to say. Um, that's what the investigation is, is looking at. And we're trying to figure out, you know, if there's a bad actor, who is it? Norman said our findings are now helping guide his department with its ongoing investigations. 
And while they haven't found a direct connection between the mailers and the entities who bought BMV data, they're still looking. I think you're right. If, if they got that data from the BMV, it would be a direct violation of the law. Um, we have. Well, I guess that's the question, though. How who else would it have been? How would it not have been you guys? I'm not sure if it, it could have come from a data aggregator. For all we know, it was random. I don't think that's the case, Bennett, but um, that's what we're looking into. Norman says his agency has continued to reduce who can get access to this data, and they're now inserting fake car data into their system, trying to replicate what happened to us. It certainly, it, it helped. Uh, we're, we're thankful, you know, we're appreciative of you bringing it to our attention. And uh, it's gonna help us sort of make sure we don't have bad actors within our system. And since our investigation, I reached back out to the BMV who told me today they have not yet received a solicitation yet. But remember, they've inserted fake driver and car title data into their own system to see if someone buys it and attempts to send out a mailer, which would be a violation. Norman says his agency is now cutting down on who has access to this info and rewriting language for some of the contracts with these entities that would limit how much of our personal data is accessible.